Hey guys, and welcome back to the second video in my online Python game development series. So in this tutorial, we're going to be working on coding the server. And then in the next video, we're going to be connecting this client that we made in the last one uh, to that server and then sending information to and from the server. Uh, so let's get started and let's create a new file that is going to be our server file. So I'll just call this one server.py. And then in here, we're just gonna have to import a few things and I'll talk about exactly what they're gonna do for us once we start using them. So let's start by importing sockets uh, or socket. Uh, then we can import underscore thread and we'll also import uh, OS. Okay, so actually not OS, sorry, SYS. That's all we need for that. So what we're gonna be doing, like I've talked about, is we're gonna be using sockets and threading to uh, handle connections to our server and essentially what that means is we're going to set up a socket and it's going to allow for connections to come into our server on a certain port so we're going to start by just defining a server which is going to be a string and port which is going to be a number now for port um, you guys probably know what ports are uh, you might have heard of them before for example like a common port you would use on uh, or a common port that is used like on your router would be port 80 and that is for HTTP connections There's also a port like 443. There's there's tons of other ports that have um, Distinct uses, but there's also a ton of ports that don't have any uses and that are just left open for programs like this Or for different things to be used for so what port I'm going to use which is typically open um, It depends on like what router you're using and your internet connection, but typically a port that's open is 5555 um, so we're going to use this port to connect to and from and it's just a safe port to use as opposed to trying to use another number uh, That we might not know if it's being used for something else or not Okay, so once we've done that we've created a s server and created a port What we're going to do is we're going to set up what's known as a socket Okay, and we'll talk about exactly how this works in a second um, But we're just going to say s equals socket dot socket and then here we're going to type something that's probably going to mean nothing to you But I'll talk about what it means. So we'll say socket equals af uh, underscore inet okay and then socket dot sock stream like that all right now these are just the types of connection so since we're going to be connecting to a uh, ipv4 address which again we're going to keep talking about all this stuff as we go through in case you guys are unfamiliar with networks uh this is the type we're going to have to use and sock stream just i believe represents um like how this server string comes in I could be wrong on that, but um, this is the type we're gonna use. And for any kind of applications like this, this will be what you use for your socket, okay? So we're just initializing that. And now the next thing to do is to bind our server and our port to the socket. So to do this, we need to do a try and accept. And the reason we do this is because like I talked about, we don't know if this is actually gonna work uh, initially doing it. There could be in some instance, this port is already being used for something. And if that's happening, that means that this is going to fail. So we need to try and accept this. So it will accept, uh, what do you call it? Uh, error as E. So what do we say? Socket dot error as E. And we'll just print that out to the screen just so we know why we're not working there. Uh, otherwise, what we'll do is we'll say S dot bind. And then in here, we're going to put server comma port. Okay. So we'll bind to whatever IP address we'll put in here uh, to this given port. Okay, so I hope everything's making sense so far. Essentially, what we're doing when we do sockets is we're setting up um, a connection or we're using a port on our server, on our network. Um, it's going to look for certain connections. And then we'll be doing this on the client side as well. We'll be binding or not. I don't know if we'll be binding. We'll just be connecting to a certain server and a port. Um, and then since we're connecting to that, this server script that we're going to have running will see that connection and handle it in some way. Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm trying to think what else we have to do. Okay, so what we're going to start by doing is we're going to start listening for connections. Um, so we're going to do s.listen. Now, s.listen essentially just opens up the port. So now we can start connecting to it and having multiple clients connecting and whatnot. Um, so in here, this actually takes one argument. Now, it's optional. Uh, and if you leave it blank, it means it'll allow for unlimited connections to happen. Now, depending on what kind of program you're writing uh, is what you're going to do for this. Now, for me, I only want two people to be able to connect to my, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, to my server. So we're just going to do s.listen2. 
Now this might actually be one because it might be like zero one, but I think two may be the correct thing. So we'll do s.listen for now. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna print after we listen. Uh, we'll just say waiting for uh, connection and we'll say server started or something like that. Because once we get to this point, we are running the server and everything actually is working. Like we're listening for connection, we're ready to go. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to define something known as a threaded function, okay? And we'll I'll talk about again what this means. Um, but let's just do threaded uh, threaded underscore client for now. And I'm just putting you don't actually have to name it this. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just putting threaded here just so we know this is threaded. And then it's going to take one argument, which is going to be conn, which stands for connection. And let's just pass in there for right now. So the way that threading works, uh, actually, let's let's do the threading and then I'll talk about how it works because it'll probably make a bit more sense. So let's do a while true down here. Okay, so once we set up uh, our server, our port, we bind it doing here, we're starting to listen, waiting for a connection, starting the server, then what we're going to do is we'll be get put into this while loop. And what this while loop will do is we'll continuously look for connections. Okay, because right here, we're just listening uh, like once right to see if anything's on that server or port. But down here, we want to continually try to grab connection let's see if something connected and if it does then we want to print something to the screen or we want to send information or we want to start a new thread which we'll talk about in a second so in here what we're going to do is we're going to say connection uh, which is c-o-n-n and then adr equals and then s dot and then we'll say accept and what s dot accept is going to do is it's going to well accept any incoming connections uh, and then it's going to store the connection and the address and the connection is by the way an object representing like what's connected the address is going to be an ip address in these uh, variables okay so if we get a connection uh what we'll do is we'll say print uh connected to okay and then adr and this is just going to show us what IP address is actually connecting. Uh, so we can have a look at that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do start underscore new underscore thread. And then in here, we're going to do uh, what was that name of the function that we had what was threaded client. Okay, and I believe we do comma and then in brackets here we do con like that. Okay, so start new thread. Is there a reason that's not working? Um, give me a sec guys. I want to see why. Oh, that's why. So up here, instead of saying import thread, we're going to say from underscore thread import star. Okay. And that's just going to make it so we can just do this start new thread thing. And you know what? I don't know if we're going to need this SYS, but let's just leave it there for now. Okay. So let's talk about what threading is going to do. So essentially the way that you guys are used to programs working, I'm assuming unless you have some familiarity with threading is that uh, say we're in this while loop, right? And we were to call the function threaded client. Well, before we continue going with this while loop, we would have to wait until this function was done running. In other words, we return back from this function some value or uh, for example, like he does like X equals five, we would have to wait for this X equals five to execute. And then it would come back in this while loop and keep going. Now, we don't want that to happen because we're going to be having multiple connections going at once. So what we want to do is we want to start what's called a thread and a thread is just another process that's running in the background. So that just means when we do start new thread and we do threaded client, um, it's going to run this function, but it's not going to need this function to finish executing before it continues the while loop. So this is going to be running in the background as like process two, while process one is still running and still going. So that means say we connect to a hundred different things, we're going to have a hundred different functions running. So a hundred different threaded clients um, on the stack or like keep going. And then what we're going to have is this while loop still continuing to go. What did I just do? Um, still continuing to run to look for another possible connection. You guys will see more how this works, but essentially just means this will run in the background and we don't have to wait for it to finish executing before we can accept another connection that that's the basic kind of way to, that works so now let's start working with threaded client and then we will uh test the server out and see if it's working and then obviously in the next video we're going to connect to it and do all the connection stuff okay so in here uh threaded client so what should happen when we connect to uh, a client well we're going to have to do a while loop in here so we're going to say while true because we want this to continually run while our client is still connected Okay, 
Now, what we're also going to do is we're just going to say reply equals blank like that. And I'm just copying from my other screen because this one is a bit finicky. I don't want to mess it up. We're going to put a try in here. And what we're going to say is we're going to try to receive some kind of data from our um, connection. Okay. From whoever's connected, we want to receive some kind of data. So what we'll do is we'll say, I believe it's uh, scon dot receive. That might be right. Yeah, I think that's right. And then in here, we're going to put the amount of bits. Okay. Now, if you guys know anything about computing, you know, like how, what bits represents. Um, but essentially this is the amount of information we're trying to receive. Now, if you're getting an error, when say you'd like do this and you connect up and you get some error that says, um, what do you call it? Like object was true on or like, uh, you, you're getting any errors, just increase this size. Okay. And you can just do that by like putting this like times eight or something. Just note that the larger this size is, the longer it's going to take to receive information. And that's obviously because the more information you're getting, the longer it takes to send that over the server. So 2048 bits is not a lot. It doesn't take very long. It happens almost instantly. But if you bump this number up to a ton, then it will take uh, longer to do that. Okay. So data, uh, and we're going to say reply equals, and then we're going to say data dot, I think it's actually string dot decode. Hmm. Let's see this. Oh, data dot decode. Cause it'll be in that, that kind of object for that data dot decode. And then here we're going to do UTF comma eight. Now, the reason we have to do this is because whenever we're sending information over a like client server system, we have to encode the information and you'll see that in the next step that we're going to encode information before we send it back to the client. Um, but that means that we're receiving encoded information. So to actually be able to read it like in a human readable string, we need to decode it first. Uh, so it's really easy to do that. We just do dot decode and we're just giving the format, which is UTF eight. Okay. So reply equals that. And then what we're going to say is we're going to say, if not data, we're going to print, uh, disconnected. Okay. And then we're going to break. And this just means if we try to get some information from the, uh, what do you call it? The client, but we're not getting anything. We're going to disconnect and we're going to break. And that likely means that we've well disconnected from the client or the client's left or something like that. So instead of continuing to run this while loop and trying to get information from a client that's disconnected, we're going to break. This is just kind of a fail safe to make sure we don't get into any infinite loops. And it's also going to show us if we're running into any issues with like receiving the data and decoding it, which we'll talk about later. Okay. So otherwise, so if we are getting information, all we're going to do is we're going to print uh, received. Is that how you spell received? Maybe. Uh, and then we're going to put, what do you call it? Reply. Okay. I uh, didn't mean to do that. Let me see if I'm spelling this right. I am not. Okay. Received reply. So this just means we received from the client, uh, this reply, let's print it to the screen and see what it looks like. And then we're going to print sending, uh, colon and we'll just print reply. Okay. And then we'll talk about this again in a second. Why does this keep happening? Okay reply next now after this uh, if not data breakout what we'll do down here is we're going to say con dot send all and we're going to send str dot encode reply now again remember that since we're sending information over the server we have to encode our information so all this is going to do is just encode our string reply into a bytes object so that means when we read it in from the client side again we'll have to decode that information uh, it's kind of annoying but i mean it's a bit security thing right so now we're just going to accept uh i guess what what kind of error would it even be i don't even know if there's gonna be any errors if we run into anything let's just break uh just to make sure that we're not you know getting in that infinite loop or we're not gonna r ruin the program by doing that okay so this is actually about it for our server uh let's see how much time we're at 13 minutes okay so now what we need to do is figure out what this server number is and then we can actually test it and see if this is working uh so what we're going to do now is we're going to find the server number. Now to do this, we're going to be doing this over uh, localhost. Okay. That means that our, we're only going to be able to connect over our local network, meaning that like anything on our Wi-Fi network um, that can see each other, that'll work fine. But as soon as we go outside that network, it won't work. So we're going to be using what's known as local IP addresses. So to find the local IP address of the machine you're currently on, you're going to go to command prompt in the bottom left. Uh, and then you're just going to type IP config. Okay. Now 
Um, some of you guys are probably freaking out because you can see my IP address right now. This is a local IP address. And that means that it is locally assigned to my network. No one outside of my network can see this IP address or can ping it or can DDoS it or anything like that, okay? So it's perfectly fine if you guys see this address or if other people know what this local address is, okay? Just as a note. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this IPv4 address, so I'll just copy that, and we're gonna paste that inside of the string here, okay? So 10.11.250.207 is mine. Now yours likely is like 192.168. something, okay? But since I'm on like a massive network, usually they use 10.10 .10, like as the default gateway, which is what they're using. So my IP address starts with a 10. Yours likely starts with 192.168.1 or dot like five or something like that, and then the rest of it, okay? So that's the address we're going to use, and this is going to be our server address. So whatever machine that you're going to be running the server script on, that's the address you want. So say you want to run this server on your laptop uh, and you want to run clients on like your PC and your Mac or something like that, then you want to make sure you get the IP address from your laptop and you're putting it in that script, okay? And we'll talk about more of this in the next video when we actually connect to it. Okay, so now that we've done this, um, I probably made a mistake, but let's actually just create a configuration quickly for server uh, and run this and just see if we're getting any errors as of now. Now, it is worth noting that we're not going to be able to connect anything yet. Um, so there's not really going to be much we can see or really do. Uh, but for now, we'll just test this out. So let's have server. Let's run this. And you can see it's waiting for a connection and server started. So that's actually good. If you're getting this uh, string of text, everything is currently working. Uh, in the next video, we'll probably have to debug a little bit once we start connecting to this. But for now, that is the main server script. Now I'll briefly just talk about before I end this video, how it's gonna work in terms of running the server script and running the client script. Um, the server script always has to be running, okay? So whenever you're trying to connect, you have to have first run the server script and then you can run multiple client scripts from wherever on the network you want. Now the server script has to be running on the machine that the IP address is like this little string here, okay? It has to be running on that machine um, and you can run a client script on the same machine that the server scripts running and you can run multiple client scripts on the same machine so like for example what I'm gonna do to test this in the next video is I'm gonna run the server and then I'm gonna run two clients on uh, this machine and we'll see that it like is moving back and forth for them so anyways that's been it for this video as always the code is up on techwithtim.net in case you guys missed any of this or you're running into any issues uh, and with that being said I will see you guys in the next video